Not content with your content? You've come to the right place. The Discontent Show with Joe Kuzma. Every brand starts with a story. Here's how you can grow your business by sharing it. Now, with today's topic, the host of The Discontent Show, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Discontent Show. My name is Joe Kuzma, and I'm here with some tips and tricks for your content marketing. Of course, I was talking about reasons for ditching email and some other efficiency things over the last few episodes, and this one's not too far off from the mark. It's more or less doing the obvious or not doing some things that may not be as obvious to you. This came about because I was working on some social media posts coming up with the holidays, trying to get some things into the editorial calendar, and lo and behold, it's like, hey, look, if it's like Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, those are all good things to put out just for goodwill to your audience, and it also means that in most cases, you should be able to schedule these posts in advance and enjoy your turkey, your pumpkin pie, and family and friends and everything of that nature. So you don't have to stress about doing things on this specific day, that specific day. Or even if you say you're one of those persons who, well, I'm going to post every Wednesday and every Friday. Hey, take a break. Kick that over to a Thursday for Turkey Day for Thanksgiving and just wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And if it's something where even if you have a podcast, I thought about this one too, and I didn't get out in front of this, but you could always tell people where you're going to be, what you're doing, how when you're going to return. There's no harm in doing that, really. I mean, everybody takes a vacation, right? So there's some things uh, I'm going to go over here, and there were a couple different articles that I gleaned these from. Uh, one of them came from Entrepreneur uh, Magazine, their website. They had a guest writer who's an online branding and marketing strategist uh, by the name of Ashley Hanawacker. And as she comes up with this article, it says, the top five not-so-obvious social media marketing mistakes you must avoid. Boy, is that a mouthful, right? But she got to hit all the keywords words on it. Probably not her decision to write that headline when you're in the publishing industry. I don't think all five of these things are really relevant to everyone, but this one really is because it's posting just the post. And uh, she says social media is meant to be an ongoing and engaging conversation. So if you don't have anything important to say, don't say it. If you don't feel inspired to share something, don't share it, period. Content that is forced usually feels fake and unauthentic. And that's exactly the way that I feel. Even though something like a Happy Thanksgiving uh, graphic, maybe you grab something that's a picture of a pumpkin pie or something, you throw it up and wish everyone a Happy Thanksgiving, it actually seems kind of uh, genuine, right? And you'll probably get people who like it because people like to do those type of things. So uh, that's not necessarily the worst thing, but when you're forcing things, it's kind of, it, it could be bad. And she also talks about sticking to your agenda, going overboard with certain things like uh, posting a certain uh, motivational quote every three three items that you have on Instagram so it lays out a certain way. Or as I said, making it every Wednesday, it's going to stress you out. It's going to burn you out. Don't do it. You don't have to do it. Remember, you can make and break the rules as far as this social media platform. I ask that people just be consistent. If you're going to post a couple times a week, post a couple times a week. I don't think anybody's going to miss if you miss a day, but if you miss a whole month, you miss two months, then you're starting to lose some traction. So uh, another thing that's important here is too much product promotion and not enough social media marketing. That means uh, she actually pulls up something from Gary Vaynerchuk, who, you know, if you don't know Gary, he was a guy that was into wine and became this huge social media guru based on his viral YouTube videos. And he's just a marketing mind, and that's how he got into this is because he understands how this works. And he has a book that's Jab, Jab, Right Hook. His point is to focus on building a relationship with the audience first. And the way you do that is, you know, Hey, you're going to cultivate trust with your audience. You got to let them in, see that real humans, uh, you know, are part of your brand, be transparent, show you that you're authentic, you know, real things here. And you do this without any kind of expectations, but every now and then you're going to give something here, give something here, and then you're going to sell something or you put it in just real slight. Uh, I, I work with some, uh, food industry people, for example, 
And you and you know your product is very good. You know when you have something that's very savory for the foodie types, and you can post it like on an Instagram or Facebook, and it has an image. You also got to let them know that it's available. You know in your shop. I mean, there's no harm in doing that. You kind of slide it right in there. So uh, another thing too is a lack of brand consistency. You know, what is your brand? You need to be consistent with certain things. Uh, you don't necessarily, and I'm going to get into this in, in, in a minute with the other article, it kind of a little bit of overlap, but uh, just being consistent too is, is that you don't want to copy what other people are doing verbatim. You also don't want to go against, if your colors are black and orange, you don't want to be using green and purple on stuff with the social media, unless it's like a sub brand or some other, you know, campaign that you're doing something with and it's branded and marketed that way, then you would stay consistently with the colors of the Joker. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and that's something that all of us should think about is consistency. It's the biggest thing. It's the key is the thing that I'm talking about. It's the reason I'm talking to you right here, just ahead of the holidays, because I realize I don't want to miss this episode and I'm able to actually do this in advance, believe it or not, and then schedule it later. So it makes my life less stressful. So now it's on to the things you got to stop doing on social media, the things that may not be so obvious. And that's posting the same thing every day. We even fall into a lull where you do it every other day. This is where where I talked about before getting rid of email and using different things to manage your projects. Go back to the previous episode and listen to that if you happen to miss it because this will make you realize no matter how you do it, if you throw it in a spreadsheet or you have some type of online app or checklist, Oh, geez, I just shared that. That was the last thing I shared, but it was three days ago. Yeah, you shouldn't share it again. What you're doing is is you're yelling at people. You're, you've are you got the megaphone. It almost reminds me of political ads. You know how sick you get of, of seeing those type of things over and over and over and over. It is eventually people are going to tune out. There are ways to tweak those messages or even tweak things that you send there. I've mentioned before, if you use, let's say you have a pile of a dozen motivational messages and you do one once a week. That's like three months worth of motivational messages. When you go back, you can almost repost them, but maybe change the color of the graphic if you're putting it like on a on a slate or using one of the fancy options with Facebook, you know, with the background colors and things like that. And it'll at least appear different, but you want to keep things fresh. And I think at least three months apart, you may be hitting new people that are following you as well as some of the people that have been there for the long haul. So uh, you're going to, you're going to hit some new audience with that as well. So there's no harm in sharing something again. You just got to give it a breather. Okay. You don't want to spam people like with the spam emails and stuff or the car warranty phone calls that happen constantly. Um, Posting pictures like, you know, I I guess of like yourself, uh, selfies. uh, There's things that end up being like arrogance, pictures of your dog and kid and stuff. You got to separate the brand and the business, especially if you're, you know, self-employed or you own your business. You got to learn to separate some of that stuff that makes people roll their eyes at you. You see it all the time. It's like the used car salesman stuff or even the new car salesman. They can't help but put themselves on TV. They have to be the 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 face of this business or whatever instead of just the car, you know what I mean? So it gets old real quick. Uh, you know, you may think you're appealing to dog lovers or something, but if you're selling, I don't know, window washing, uh, supplies or something, I don't see how a dog relates to that unless they're slobbering on the window. Maybe, maybe that'll get something. But uh, other than that, I think you'd see what I'm talking about. Unless like, you're selling like dog food and pet supplies or things that are, you know, if it's carpet cleaning, you can maybe show your dog, but some people like to throw dogs and cats out there just more than even kids. And it's just, it's so cheesy and hokey. Just stay away from it. I was already mentioning political ads stay away from anything controversial like you don't need to talk politics on your business you don't need to talk uh, about religion or anything else controversial we know all the hot button topics abortion guns you name it you know what they are stay away from them you don't even want to do that unless unless you have a facebook page where you maybe only have 50 to 100 people that are close friends i say that close friends, not just acquaintances and or family members who aren't also going to out you or throw you under the bus for your views. You kind of just keep that stuff off the internet. I get that some people, you, you want to be like philanthropists. You want to be, you know, public speakers, or you're very passionate about certain things. But what you end up doing is, is that maybe not when you're, in the case of something controversial, especially, or something that where people don't all agree on, you're alienating, you're, you're splitting your potential clients or customers base in half, your audience in half. 
it's never a good thing. You want to cast the net as wide and far as it is. Why shoot yourself in the foot by bringing up some of these things? You, you still got to be careful, even if it's not attached to the business, because some people may still find you, especially if it's a public Twitter, and then connect the dots. I mean, you could think of it with certain businesses that it's happened with over the last several years where owners are tied with, let's say, a religious affiliation, and then that's connected to their business, and it could, it could harm their business in many ways. So uh, just be careful. By all means, have the beliefs that you want. Just be careful how you display that publicly and what kind of image that may portray that could negatively impact your business, okay? Uh, this goes the same for things that aren't related to your business because those aren't, but there's other stuff. Uh, you know, th this was good off of what I'm reading off of is th this one little snippet that I got was really good quote, came off of the obviousadvertising.com website. They're talking about people who browse social media, they do so like they're watching TV. If the History Channel starts playing Disney movies, it doesn't make sense. So at least make sure it's relevant to your business and your campaigns. And finally, people don't want to follow people who are negative. If you whine and complain and bellyache and moan about everything, you know, just be careful because uh, I think a lot of people already have uh, this concept that going on social media is negative. A lot of people have long days at work. Their life is stressful. They're running around with kids or paying bills or, you know, dealing with telemarketers or whatever may be the case, right? And they come home. The last thing they want to do is see your post on Facebook or Twitter pop up and it is just scathing negativity because it's just going to bring them. You surround yourself with people, you know, that, that you want to be surrounded with. And if you surround yourself with positive people, it should lift you up. They don't want to be dragged down by anything that's negative. Even even if you have every reason to, like like you're saying a bad review or you have bad business with some other people, unless you have to do some type of press release, some type of public relations in order to set a story straight as to not drag you down into the abyss with it, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. It's not worth it. And, you know, people are going to, they're going to respond better to anything that's more positive. And it's important to consider what it's doing to you too. Because if you're doing that, then you're kind of just going down that same path too. If you just take a deep breath and let it go, then just let it go. Okay. Stay things that are, if it's positive, and then you're going to attract more positivity as well. I hope these things kind of help you out. I know it's a short show, but sometimes it's just not the most obvious things. And I know that I hit it off with the holiday stuff. There's no harm in the holiday stuff. The holiday stuff, for the most part, shouldn't get into anything controversial. It might be related to your business. And it's something that's very easy to put on uh, online and uh, just to schedule in advance and give yourself a little breather and a small vacation or break away from the social media world while you do those sorts of things. You can do the same thing with the blog. You can do the same thing with the podcast as well. You know the five pillars that I subscribe to. So if you want to read more information or listen to some of the backlogs from the archive and other episodes from this Discontent Show, I encourage you to, go to head on over to my website. That's joekuzma.com. Dot com. And there's some other ways to follow me that'll follow here in a few seconds. But I always encourage, I appreciate all my listeners and I encourage you to be safe, be good, and I'll catch you later. Hi folks, this is Joe Kuzma. <laughs> no, don't worry, you're not hearing things twice. I'm just here to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening to today's show and being a follower and subscriber of the Discontent Podcast. And I want to remind you that if you're interested in more information about all the various things it is that I do, whether it be about this show, content marketing, or you want to ask a question, you may visit me at joekuzma.com. That's J-O-E-K-U-Z-M-A.com. Or you can follow me as well on Facebook. Make sure you get the page and not the personal profile. Sorry, it's only for friends and family. Also on Twitter at Joe underscore Kuzma, LinkedIn or Instagram. Also, don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe, whether that be on iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcast provider, so you don't miss out on any of the great episodes that we have. Once again, thank you again for your support, and I look forward, as always, to speaking and interacting with each of you again soon.